<laughs> Don't you fucking start with the tomato soup and grilled cheese. Also, did you- oh god, um... Uh, we shared this terrible, terrible video of Gordon Ramsay making awful grilled cheese. We should probably watch it again here. For those of you who haven't seen it. Should have auto landed it, probably. Hey, where's my cargo? Yeah. Okay, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> he's such a weak little fuck about it. Like he made something awful on purpose. I, I guess it was on purpose because I can't imagine it being any anything but on purpose. Let's take a look at it here. Let's see here. Gordon Ramsay makes grilled cheese. Oh my god, this is it is the dumbest fucking just it's so it, I don't I'm not a big fan of grilled cheese. But that's something quite amazing for a grilled cheese, especially when you have these incredible cheeses. Uh, Aramana with pepperberry and uh, Asiago. Beautiful. I mean, really beautiful. To do the ultimate grilled cheese with this is a dream come true. So I'm going to just cut nice big long slices so I can take off the rind easily. Okay. And those pepperberries is going to make the cheese a little bit spicy. Look at that there. I mean, so Look at the size of that chunk. And then with the Asiago again down. And and he's also using hard cheese too, so like that stuff's not gonna melt very well. And then from there, get the slice and just go in half again. So you've got these nice long, luscious, almost like sort of bricks. Mini Bricks of cheese. No, 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 Bricks no. of cheese. The berry is incredible. Now the bread. The secret behind a great grilled cheese is to make sure the bread is not too thin. Now, if the bread is too thick, uh, you're, you're not going to melt the cheese. Locally baked country bread. Now, from there, a little bit of butter. Okay, and always. Butter heavily on the outside. You'll see why, especially when you get that nice. <laughs> what are you talking about? Wait for it. Texture. Wait for it, Jan. Again. Hey, so far, everything looks pretty good, right? Everything looks copacetic. Wait, wait okay. for it. I want to season the outside with some salt. That way, when you grab a hold of the sandwich, your fingers get covered in fucking butter and salt. Your cheese and sort of almost to make it in a way that it becomes somewhat almost fitted to the bread and the secret behind this grilled cheese is a little bit of kimchi all right you fucks i was i was on board for this recipe i'm like okay so far we got the things we got bread we got butter we got cheese and no you're not making a grilled cheese sandwich anymore right now you are now making a kimchi melt <laughs> this has to be a joke. I know waffle liquor. I just I I am off. I have just left the station now. Like, nope. Nope, you're just gone way <laughs> He is dead fucking serious. Homemade kimchi, which is gonna give a nice spicy texture to that incredible cheese. <laughs> now it's, it's a melt in this kimchi. It's incredible. But once it's been cooked, breathtaking. The the acidity in this, he's he's And then from there, push that down. Yeah, just to squish the sandwich. The the you could you could have made the sandwich a little bit smaller so it'd be can handle eel yeah, right, I know. And then he's using okay. This is actually an extremely imprecise way of cooking. Uh this is this is how your how your ancestors cook. And it was kind of like, eh, it seems hot enough. Nice and warm. Touch of olive oil in. 
I mean, not that, not like you have butter on the fucking sandwich already. We, we're gonna add more oil. Which kind of makes me believe that Gordon Ramsay's never had actually had a grilled cheese sandwich. Now he gets a fucking spatula. Matt, look, look at the thickness of that sandwich. You're not gonna get that cheese to melt. And that's way too much fucking heat. As she cooks, start putting some weight on there. And just pushing it down. And of course, it's burning. Because the you can't control the heat over a fire. Like that. Like, like, you got fucking part of the sandwich is burnt already. And he's just squishing that motherfucker down. That way gets nice and crispy. <clears throat> Beautiful. Why don't you just get a fucking panini Two press at this side. rate? And then once you've colored both sides back out, and just place your spatula on top and push down. And that helps to get the cheese nice. I mean, you could have just sliced the bread thinner instead of having to push down on the bread. He melted. That incredible. I thought you were being dramatic with this is horrible. With that incredible cheese, especially with that pepperberry, it's just gonna be a wonderful combination. And also, it's and it's okay. So far, we haven't gone to the real sin of this episode. Wait for it. Take that out. Turn that over. Look. I am looking. All right. Here comes the here comes the absolute sin. I'm sorry. What I'm sorry. What was that, Gordon Ramsay? Let's turn the audio up here. Maybe we, well, let's turn subtitles on. Let's let's turn like we we need to be very precise about. Okay, what did you say, Gordon? Just now. Beautiful. Beautiful. The cheese is melted. The cheese is melted. Okay, well, I'm sorry. What was that? Beautiful. I think it's the cheese is melted. Hold one more time. What one more time? Beautiful. The cheese is melted. Are you sure about that, Gordon? Are you fucking sure? Yeah, how crispy that is. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh my god. I I I I are you sure about that, Gordon? Are you sure about that fucking cheese being melted? That looks like a fucking solid chunk of cheese to me. Let let's enhance. Let let's enhance that cheese, that melty goodness. Uh, yeah, that cheese doesn't look like it has gone anywhere. That is the fucking biggest sin of this fucking recipe. Did even warm the cheese up, probably. <laughs> exactly, Nadia. You might as well just put the bread in the toaster. You could have, yes, you could have done that. You could have just buttered the, you could have buttered the toast, put it in the toaster, warm the bread up, slap it, you know, some craft singles. <laughs> it's not even melty cheese. I mean, it's, it's basically toast with cheese on it and kimchi. Oh my god. It's all very hot. And he's like, it's all very hot. Oh my god. It's not gooey or anything. That's incredible. Alright, so let's let's fix this. Let's let let's watch Alton Brown make a grilled cheese. And he, he, this, this guy, if you're gonna, if you're gonna overthink grilled cheese, Alton Brown's got you. And, but if you want to actually just basic... Whoa, you, is that a grilled cheese deluxe from Cheezers? Yes, it is. Ow. <laughs> oh, how did you manage this? I bought it with money. Nice. Hey, you know what would go good with these sandwiches? Funny internet videos. Ooh, that's kind of meta. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I'm double dipping into the same show two weeks in a row. Because yeah, I'm I curious, know Pepsi. Can we improve upon the classic combination of butter, two slices of white bread, and some yellow American cheese to make the ultimate grilled cheese, or a grilled cheese deluxe? Friday was National Grilled Cheese Day, and I guess it got me in the mood, so to speak. So first up, we need a control look at that melty group, cheese. Which is a classic. Yellow American white bread, Vermont creamery butter, grilled in a nonstick. Oh, pan look at that! Stretch. Look, 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 look at that! Melty cheese, absolutely melty cheese. The bread is toasted; it's not too thick. Look at that shit! A man who knows how to make the classics. 
Hell yeah, dude. But how do we make this a grilled cheese deluxe? Let's start with the bread. White bread is definitely the only way to go because the least healthy option is always gonna be the tastiest one, but I'm going to try out a few different lubrications. Plain butter, butter mixed with a little bit of mustard, full fat mayonnaise, and light olive oil. I'm just gonna toast these guys up one at a time in a plain, ungreased, nonstick skillet, and we're looking for aesthetic, but mostly flavor here. We obviously want a deep brown, rich, and savory crust, but we don't want to steal the spotlight from the star of the show, the cheese. So let us bring in the taste testers. They are one Sawyer Carter Jacobs, my business partner and best friend extraordinaire, and Vincent Cross, the newest okay, and tallest so, Carter Jacobs. So people wonder why the fuck I wear why I wear suspenders. This guy kind of perfectly demonstrates. Let's mute the audio here. This guy this guy walking off screen perfectly demonstrates why I wear suspenders. Look at him, look at him pulling his fucking pants up. He's he's reaching down his fucking pants, scratching his ass while he's walking onto camera, and then he's gonna be getting his shit hooks all over this fucking grilled cheese. That's not very appetizing. I tell you what. <laughs> Cross, the newest and tallest addition to the Babish Culinary Universe. <laughs> Their opinions were split on these different. Rule is, thank you for that follow. Do appreciate it. Pure olive oil, and Vinny was all about butter. And I gotta say, I side with Vinny on this one. Butter is the one and only true way for grilled cheese. There was, <laughs> no however, problem. one other toasting application I wanted to try, which was straight up cheddar grated onto and toasted into the outside of the bread. The consensus here is that it was delicious, but it was too greasy, and moreover, it was overkill. This is grilled cheese; it doesn't need any help. What it does need however, is cheese. Lots of cheese. So I've got 18 different kinds here that I'm going to try, including, but not limited to, sharp cheddar, mild cheddar, raclette, Havarti, Swiss, Gruyere, aged All right. a young... I, I tell you right now, mozzarella and... Let's see. Uh, low moisture mozzarella and sharp cheddar. Those kind of shredded, mixed together. Mozzarella has a nice stretch to it when you heat it up. Gouda, Parmesan, Brie, Telegio, Mozzarella, Blue, Gorgonzola, <laughs> Provolone, Goat, and Monterey Jack. Plus whatever else I had kicking around in the fridge. With three mini grilled cheeses at a time, my taste testers have returned to tell me what's what. Vinny was very concerned with the tensile strength of each cheese, but both were most interested in the flavor, color, and aged funk. But apparently none of us were concerned about our cholesterol levels. But I just kept telling myself I'm conducting these experiments in the name of science. Plus, they both know that they're responsible for their own healthcare plans. So really, it's their fault if you think about it. Anyway, we toiled on into the night, trying every form of hey. melted cheese betwixt buttered toasted bread. And once Vinny stretched every sandwich to its limit, it was time to start trying blends. Because no way was any one cheese gonna cut it. It was gonna be about deftly mixing together salty, sweet, stretchy, melty, savory, oily, and funky. But mozzarella has a good stretch to it because it has blend. really high fat First content. Monterey, Jack, That's why they use it in pizzas. And mozzarella, which I learned that I didn't put enough cheese in, so we didn't get much of a stretch, but this was gonna be about flavor. And the consensus was that it was a grilled cheese, so obviously it was good, but it needed some work. So we moved to to aged yellow cheddar, Gruyere, and Swiss, and while they liked Ooh, the color Gruyere. of this one better, the flavors were too strong. Vinny was, however, satisfied with its stretch. Next up, I was pretty sure I hit the jackpot. Aged cheddar, Gruyere, a nine-month-old Gouda, and Parmesan for a little extra bite. Naturally, it passed Vinny's rigorous stretchiness test. That's what thought what's real had high fat content. Winner. But there was one big problem. This was a greasy, greasy sandwich, and that's because aged cheeses do not melt in the same way as young, heavily processed cheeses. This slice of yellow American dropped directly into a nonstick skillet melts perfectly and evenly and utterly without muss or fuss. Try this with a two-year-old Parmesan, however, and all of your melty cheese dreams will be shattered. That's because the older cheese gets, not only does it lose more and more moisture, some kind of science bullshit happens with its casein proteins, and when you melt it, you're left with a ton of oil. To solve this problem, we're turning to J. Kenji Lopez mm. Alt, who instructs us to hydrate one tablespoon of gelatin in one tablespoon of water before grating our our top four cheeses together. I'm going with four ounces of sharp cheddar, three ounces of Gruyere, three ounces of young mm. Gouda, and two ounces of Parmesan. For a total of 12 ounces that we're going to set aside while we bring half a cup of evaporated milk to a boil. Wait, I mean, is he going to make a bechamel? We're whisking in our hydrated gelatin until it is fully melted into the mixture. Then we're going to return the pan over low heat while we add in our cheese. You'll notice that my heat is not on because Okay. I'm this is basically how you make a bechamel, except you use butter, milk, and flour. And I guess he's kind of going the same direction. Then you dump a whole bunch of cheese in it. You cook up some fucking macaroni. You dump that in there. You got a fucking macaroni. Homemade macaroni and cheese.
stupid and I did this wrong. It still worked, it's just going to be a lot easier if you do this over low heat while you apply an immersion blender to the mixture in an effort to make it as smooth and homogenous as possible. Then ideally you want to lay it down onto a plastic wrap lined baking sheet and spread it out as thin as possible. Instead, I'm going to press it into a plastic wrap lined ramekin and mold it into a cylinder that I can then cut into slices. Four hours later and once my cylinder has solidified... <laughs> what are you even doing, Babish? It, plastic wrap, unwrapping it, and slicing into our quote-unquote processed cheese product. It's really pretty spooky to eat because it has the same texture and consistency as American cheese, but it tastes like Gruyere and cheddar and all that good stuff that we put in there. And it passes the melty test with flying colors, becoming incredibly soft and melty and malleable without pissing grease all over the place. And it's got all the flavor and texture that I could possibly ask for in a grilled cheese. All it needs is the olives. Now there's a grilled cheese deluxe that lives up to its name. And the olives were actually pretty nice touch. They were like a refreshing acidic bite after all that richness and cheese. But I still didn't feel like we were done and I knew I wasn't going to feel that way until I made my own bread. I've done this on the show there before. You go. Click the link in the upper right hand corner right now if you want to see how to make your own sandwich bread at home. But just to give you the breeze through, I'm combining 400 milliliters of water, one packet of instant yeast, 650 grams of all-purpose flour, 50 yeah, grams he's of making sugar, 5 he's grams making of bread. salt, and 45 grams of unsalted butter in the bowl of a stand mixer. Kneading for 5 to 7 minutes, letting rise for 45 minutes minutes in a covered oiled bowl, punching down and placing into a loaf pan loosely tented with plastic wrap, and letting rise for 45 more minutes or until doubled in size, brushing down with melted butter and placing into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 25 to 35 minutes until deeply golden brown, removing from the loaf pan, placing on a cooling rack, and making sure that the internal temperature registers about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, letting rest for one and one half hours or until completely cooled. Whew. That was easy. I definitely overproved my loaf a little bit, but with a little trimming, it works perfectly as the foundation for our grilled cheese deluxe. Finally, I think we cracked it. Just some olives in the top, and then someone to help taste test. At this point, Sawyer and Vinny were at home for the weekend, but my buddy Justin here came over to tell me that I really knocked it out of the park with this one, which I really needed because I don't think I could eat any more grilled cheese. Um, maybe just one more. There you go. And of course, we have um, Alton Brown's weird ass grilled cheese. Please take a moment to uh, just quietly read the three words on the blackboard here. <laughs> we're, no, we're taking Gordon to school, like, and then college. We're, we're going through the entire curriculum here. How you feeling? You know, a few such arrangements are capable of stimulating so much desire, so much nostalgia, so much saliva. And yet, for me, these words represent disappointment dishonesty and, and disillusionment. That's because whenever and wherever people say they're gonna make you a grilled cheese sandwich, what they really mean is they're gonna make you a griddled sandwich containing some melted cheese. Well, not me, no. When I say grilled cheese sandwich, <laughs> I mean a grilled Alton sandwich just goes, containing he's, he's grilled just going to cheese. another dimension Here's how with I this. Do it. You're gonna need a charcoal grill. Notice here that I've got a large uh, chimney starter's worth ow, of charcoal already started and piled up just on one side of the grill. Yes, see, I use natural chunk charcoal because I'm, well, I'm naturally chunky. As for the actual ingredients, um, for two sandwiches, you're gonna need four half inch slices of good, hearty, uh, country style bread. All right, you're gonna need some fat for this. Uh, if you're a butter fan, go ahead and spread a little on both sides. If, however, you prefer olive oil, uh, hold off until we're just a little bit closer to the fire time. As for the cheese, I believe that two cheeses are better than none. I want sharp, but I want nutty too, and I want a little spice. I want the edges to crust, yet I want a high gooeyness factor. So uh, I've got three ounces of uh, extra sharp uh, cheddar cheese and three ounces of Gruyere. And yes, I grated them myself, and yes, I can tell the difference. By the way, no pre-grated back stuff, or I'll find out about it and I'll be unhappy. All right, come here. The secret <laughs> weapon is that I add spices, <laughs> all right? I stir in a teaspoon of dry mustard, Half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Yes, and a little apocalypse. Of freshly ground black pepper. You don't have one of those in your kitchen? Leave any or all of these out. But you're not going to. And we both know it. Good. Now, uh, as far as hardware goes, um, I have got my favorite uh, pair of spring loaded tongs. And uh, check this out two grill spatulas with my. What are the grill spatulas for? I've used my favorite multitasker heavy duty foil uh, to make them both into shallow trays uh, with uh, just a little bit of lip. And here is why. I'm gonna okay, what are we going to do? What are we doing here, Alton Brown? On what, are we, what are we doing with these? Both. Half goes there, half goes there. I'm gonna spill a little. That's the way it goes. Now, put the cheese down. 
Well, why? Why is he grilling the cheese separately? What is he doing? Burn. You're going to have to move this around and shift it several times during the uh, six to nine minutes it's going to take to get nice and bubbly. And listen, hey, hey, seriously, when this stuff starts bubbling, don't look right at it or you will become hypnotized, I promise. Or leave that alone. Let's prep the uh, bread. Now, uh, I do want to go with uh, olive oil, so I'm just going to kind of spritz this down lightly on uh, both sides. I don't care if it's perfect coverage. You can use a brush oh yes, it's gonna look nice. Like using the spritzer because I hate cleaning brushes. That's gonna go over direct heat. And here's the uh, the danger: this stuff uh, could burn. So you're gonna have to really keep an eye on it. Oh, it it's gonna smooth. burn if you I'm put it over open fire. Now that the uh, that's the good advice. Look at those grill marks. Oh, come on, look at that. That's good shit. Ooh, Oop, that one's a little bit more done. A little warm, so we're gonna move it over here. Those grill marks look right, good I'm though. Take that one off and go to the foil. That's going to be for sandwich one. I'd say these guys go pretty well together. We've got to move the cheese over, and this is a uh, this is going to be a lot easier than it looks. Kind of fold down the the lips a little bit, slide on to the sandwich. Bread goes over, and then just wrap that up. I'm going to put this back on the heat just for a couple of minutes. Indirect heat, indirect heat, all the way back over here so that the cheese and the bread can kind of get to know each other. Now let's build this other one. Come on, out you go. I feel like Alton Brown is coming from the same that direction is a grilled as Gordon Ramsay. From grilled cheese. Overcomplicated now, mess. The spatulas actually function as a grill. But you know what? In the words of my 13-year-old daughter, whatever. Remember, America, but it's actually a grilled fucking cheese sandwich. I think he, I think he he came from the exact same direction as Gordon Ramsay, but he actually made a grilled cheese sandwich. Overcomplicated as all fuck, but it, but it's an actual grilled cheese sandwich.